So my mini lathe arrived today and I'm going to open this crate and see how it looks. So it looks like everything is, is very oily, which is good, prevents rust, but it's all intact and I, I don't see any damage, so that's a good thing. The lathe is bolted to the bottom of the crate so I'm going to put the styrofoam back in and then I'll roll it over on its backside so I can get the bolts out So I got the lathe all cleaned up, wiped all the oil off, and I put it on this bench. Uh, this bench is in its permanent location, so I don't have it bolted down yet. Everything was pre-assembled except for the handle for the cross slide. It was probably removed for shipping because it sticks out and might get broken off. And that was in the toolbox. Here's the control panel. There's a kill switch, and to turn the power on, you just push that kill switch forward, and this door pops open, and then you have the on and off button for the power. In an emergency, you just push that down, and it kills the power. And over here is the speed control knob for the RPM. And here's the forward reverse switch. And forward, reverse, and off. On the side of the control panel there's a fuse and in the toolbox was a spare fuse. There's a safety shield over the chuck and this is a three jaw chuck. The Chuck key has a spring on it, and this is a safety feature. So if you accidentally leave it in the chuck, forget to take it out, the spring will pop the chuck key out so you don't turn it on and send it flying out. So onto the cross slide. There does not seem to be a lot of backlash, so that's good. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of play in the components, everything seems to be pretty well adjusted. And here's the tool holder. This lathe did not come with any cutting tools. Um, you have to buy those separately and they just go in the slot and then you would type down these bolts. You may have to shim the tool up to get the correct height. And this tool holder does index. Let's loosen this and pick it up and turn it and then tighten it back down. 
The tail stock does have a lock on it. You can move that, adjust it, lock that. And there's also a lock for the quill. And the lathe did come with a center for the tail stock. And this is an MT2 Morse taper on the tail stock. And the finish on all the machine surfaces appears to be pretty good. So next I'm going to turn it on and see how it runs. Uh, the first thing you should do is turn the speed knob all the way down. Make sure that the four reverse switch is in the off or neutral position. Then I'll turn on the power and turn it to forward and then slowly increase the RPM. And now I'm going to turn to reverse. Try that out. Alright, so that seems to work fine. So now I put my magnetic base on the lathe with a dial indicator. And I've got a ground shaft in the chuck. I just want to see what kind of run out there is. It's not going to be perfect because it's a three job chuck, but see how close it is. You can see it's it's a couple of thousandths out. I don't think that's too bad. Next I want to check the actual RPM. I put some tape on this shaft and just leaving a shiny spot right here so that I can use my tachometer to check the RPM. So the tachometer is showing almost 2800 RPM. The dial shows a maximum of 2500, so that's quite a bit more than it shows on here. Before you use the lathe, you should put a coat of oil on all these machine surfaces. So I've chucked up a piece of hot rolled in the lathe and I'm going to make a cut on it. And I have a tool bit in there with a carbide insert on it. Next I want to try out the power feed. This is the lever that engages the lead screw for the power feed. To turn on the power feed you go to the back side of the lathe and there's this lever and it pulls out and you raise it up and you can see there's a little indentation right here. So there's a pin that will go into there. So just pull this out and then lift it up and then release it and that'll lock it in place. So now when I turn the lathe on you'll see this lead screw turning. So you can see the lead screw is turning. 
And when I rotate this lever down, the half nut will engage with the lead screw and it'll move automatically. And so now when I turn it on, you can see it cut using the auto feed. So now I've turned down the end of this shaft to a point so I can check the alignment of the telstock. So looking at the two points from the point on the end of the shaft that I turned and the point on the center, up and down or vertically they appear to be centered. That doesn't look too bad. But it looks like uh, looking down from the top it's off alignment a little front to back so I'll have to adjust that. To adjust the tailstock, there's a screw in the bottom of here. You have to remove the tailstock to get to it. Before the tailstock can be removed from the lathe, there's a screw back here that prevents the tailstock from sliding off the back of the lathe. So I'm going to remove that first. And then the tailstock slides off the back of the lathe. And here's the bolt on the bottom of the tailstock. You loosen that, and you can see it's slotted so you can adjust it. There should also be, on the back here, a couple of set screws in here to help hold it in place. It appears that those are missing, so I'll have to get a couple to replace those. So I loosened the screw and adjusted the tailstock slightly forward and I think it looks a lot better now. So you can see the two points are lined up. So that's good. And you should check it with the quill as far in as it'll go and out because the tailstock may be at an angle. So if it's good when it's back here and up here, then it's running parallel. Another way to tell if the tailstock is lined up is to put a straight edge between the two points and tighten the center on the tailstock just enough to hold the straight edge in place. You don't want to damage anything. And then it should be completely vertical and as you can see that it is here. And when you look down from above it should not be twisted. If the points were not in line, you would see the straight edge tilted one way or the other or twisted in one direction or the other. But since the points are lined up, it holds it vertical. Here's some of the other items that came in the toolbox. There's an oil bottle. There's also this second set of jaws. And these are for holding externally. On the, on the lathe chuck. So on the chuck, normally you would have a shaft in here and it clamps it on here. You would close the jaws to clamp on there. But you could also cut something like this on here and you put it over the jaws and open the jaws and then this part of the jaw grips onto the cylinder and holds it internally from the inside. But if you have something much larger that this chuck won't open far enough you use these jaws and they would be turned this way and hold from here. So if you had a very large diameter shaft or tubing you could use this one and it holds from the outside. There's also a set of Allen wrenches included and a couple of open end wrenches. Looks like they're both 14 on one end and 17 millimeter on the other. Then there are these rubber feet vibration dampeners and they would go underneath 
this drip tray when you mount it to a bench or something. And then there's a set of gears of various sizes. And that's to adjust the speed of the lead screw. And you do that in the back of the lathe. And here on the side of the lathe there's this chart. And it shows you which gears you would need to use, which placement, for different speeds and for cutting threads. And you just remove this cover by taking these two screws out. And then this cover just comes off the back. So here's the end of the lead screw here. So you'd have to change out these gears to get different feeds for the lathe. And here's that lever again for the lead screw. You see here it's in the neutral position. And then when you raise it up, that locks it in place for forward. And then when you go down, that locks it in for reverse. Now that I've checked out the lathe and I have it all set up, I want to use it to put a couple of small grooves in this brass shaft. And I'm just going to use this little parting tool because it's about the right width for the grooves. And then I need to make a second groove here. Now I'm going to take the shaft over here to this miniature drill press that I'm building and I'll see how it fits. So this shaft goes in here to hold this set of pulleys. And then this clip goes in that groove that I just made in the, in the shaft. And then a second clip goes in the other groove. Overall, I would say this is going to be a very handy little lathe to have. 